Hi there, my name is Ari Altman from the Tech Buyers Guru, and I'm here surrounded today by some great new PC components. I'm going to be putting all this stuff to great use by producing a 2019 PC assembly video. That's going to be coming out in a few weeks. In this video, I'm going to be showing you what all the components are that are going to be going into the build and highlighting some of the cool features that each of these components has. Now, all the stuff here, uh, for, for the most part, is brand new for 2019. Some of it was released last year. Uh, but all of it's pretty cutting edge. I'm going to be starting with a few of the products that I purchased at retail um, because I knew I needed to have really the best gaming CPU on the market and that there's no doubt that it's the Core i9-9900K from Intel. Um, this was released in October uh, and then was more it was really available at retail in December 2018. So now we're in February 2019. It's about two months that this has been on store shelves. Um, also on board here will be the EVGA GeForce RTX 2080 Ti Black video card. Of course, the 2080 Ti is probably uh, known by most gamers uh, by, at this point. It's a heavy hitting and high priced video card. Uh, but I had to have it because I wanted to make sure that this represented the best of the best um, available here in early 2019. I got this particular model actually because it comes in at a really decent price. Uh, the MSRP of this is actually the $1,000 price point that NVIDIA originally announced when it announced and when it released these products in September. Uh, this one really actually only became, in Janu uh, became available in January. And that's when I picked it up direct from EVGA. Uh, backing up the CPU and GPU will be the ASUS ROG Maximus 11 Hero Wi-Fi motherboard. This is a Z390 based uh, uh, motherboard, of course, being an Intel uh, product. And it uh, has a number of great features. It's a pretty good overclocker, um, but another great feature that it has is it uses the ASUS Aura RGB control system, which I'm going to be putting to good use in this system because I have a lot of RGB gear that's going to be syncing up to this motherboard. Um, next out here are a number of products that actually some great companies uh, agreed to provide to the Tech Buyers Guru for purposes of this video. And I really want to highlight some great features of these products and also, again, thank these companies for providing these, these components because otherwise I really couldn't make this video happen. So I'm going to start over here with Thermaltake's brand new Pure 12 ARGB Sync Fan Kit. This includes three fans plus the adapters you need to either hook it up to the included ARGB controller or to your motherboard's 5 volt 3 pin ARGB header. That's now a standard that you'll find on all high-end motherboards from the major motherboard manufacturers. Another great feature of this fan is that it uses hydraulic bearings. So it's actually also a very, very good quality fan in addition to having those ARGB effects. Next, I'm going to point out the Noctua NF-A12 X25 PW fan, PWM fan. This was released in mid-2018 um, and it is considered the best fan on the market. It's a 120 millimeter fan that can uh, provide the airflow and the static pressure of many 140 millimeter fans and while doing it quieter. And it uses two uh, very important advancements. It has a metal shielded uh, motor housing in the middle, which you can see here. And it also has something called a Sterox liquid crystal polymer. And that material uh, is, is what allows for this extremely tight tolerance between the blades and the frame. Noctua also sent along its NTH2 thermal compound, which you can see down at the uh, bottom of the table here. And Noctua has been well known for having one of the best thermal pastes on the market, NTH1, for over a decade. Um, well, Noctua has outdone itself now with a product that has better thermal performance. Noctua claims about a 2 degree Celsius drop in performance using just a switch to its new NTH2, while still being really easy to apply and requiring no cure time. So it's really the ideal product for the enthusiast, particularly those who switch out their coolers or replace their coolers regularly. Next up is Thermaltake's cooler. Speaking of coolers, we've got the brand new ARGB sync version of the Water 3.0 360. So yes, again, we're using these ARGB fans. It uses three of these fans. So in, this, in, whole, in total, this system will have six of these ARGB fans. It also uses the ARGB pump header um, that we was first debuted in the flow line of very high-end all-in-one coolers from Thermaltake. Down here we have Samsung's 970 Pro M2 SSD. This is a PCIe-based NVMe drive that uses MLC flash 
it's the only uh, SSD on the market that still uses MLC Flash, which is a higher endurance product and also a higher speed product than the TLC and QLC NAND that all solid state drives are using these days. Um, the only SSD that's faster than this is the Optane, and that's not available in two format. Um, so I'm very pleased that Samsung sent this along. I actually asked them if they'd send their newer 970 Evo Plus that was just announced in January after CS 2019. They said they didn't have enough availability of, of that product to send along, so they sent their higher end at 970 Pro, which overall still has better performance, in particular under uh, heavy use situations where the SLC cache of a, a, a 970 Evo series drive would be uh, uh, filled and then it would drop down in performance. Nothing beats an MLC NAND based SSD for uh, consistent performance under duress. Next up, uh, we have behind that the Crucial MX500 uh, one terabyte, 2.5 inch drive. The reason I'm including this is because it's kind of a legacy format that a lot of people still use. I prefer M2 drives, but uh, the uh, 2.5 inch versions of all the SATA drives perform identically. And this is actually a warranty replacement for my MX200 one terabyte that I purchased at retail in uh, November of 2015. Um, in October 2018, it failed two years and 11 months later. It had a three-year warranty and Crucial was very upfront that they were gonna cover it, no questions asked. And they sent me a new MX500 one terabyte, which of course is actually an even better drive. I am including this in this build in particular because I wanna highlight how important it is to look at the warranty coverage and consider the manufacturer you're buying from, whether or not they're reputable, whether or not they have a uh, reputation for great customer service like Crucial does. And so look, SSD fails, components fail. Any component can fail. Anything on this table could fail. Um, what's important is the company backs it up and Crucial backed up their warranty. And actually now with the MX500, they offer a five-year warranty. The 970 Pro also has that five-year warranty. And I'd consider any high-end drive today uh, worth its salt would have to have a five-year warranty. So if we look, look for that. It's often hard to find, and that's because a lot of companies are hiding behind a three-year warranty, which I really don't uh, like very much at this point. But what I hope will be featured in the build, which is Corsair's brand new Dominator Platinum RGB kit. Uh, Corsair has actually promised to send that along, but it's actually not available yet. It was announced at a press conference at CS 2019 that I attended. It's, it was not a retail product at the time. They didn't even show it at the sh on the show floor at CES. Uh, but they promised that they'd be able to send it along. They know they, they want it featured in this video. So hopefully in the next couple of weeks, it'll come, come in and I'll be able to feature it in the build once I get it all together. In the meantime, I'm gonna be using the uh, Vengeance RGB to set up the system and just get it, you know, work, work through the kinks. Um, and hopefully once the whole thing is settled in, I've got the got everything loaded, I can switch over to the Dominator Platinum, which has even better RGB effects and potentially a higher performance as well. Next up, we have Silverstone's brand new uh, ST1000 PTS Platinum Rated 1000 Watt Power Supply. The claim to fame of this model, which was announced um, previously and then first shown uh, in retail form at CS 2019, is it's the first 1000 watt class PSU that's 140 millimeters long. So this is an extremely compact uh, power supply. Typically, power supplies uh, of this size have 400 to 500 watts. This has 1,000 watts plus its platinum rating. Another important feature of this power supply that shows that it's really a cutting edge modern power supply is it has two 8-pin EPS connectors for CPU power. That is critical in today's high power draw world of CPUs. The Core i9-9900K essentially requires more than an 8-pin connector to power it up. And that's why any high-end motherboard today using the Z90, Z390 chipset has at least an 8-pin and a 4-pin CPU connector, as does the Asus model that I'm using. Some actually have dual 8-pin connectors. So if you have a power supply from a few years ago, even one that was high-end at the time, it may not have sufficient CPU power connectors to run a 9900K, which is a pretty mainstream CPU, even though it uses a ton of power. Yes, it's rated at 95 watts. No Intel is not telling the truth about that. This is actually a 140 to 150 watt processor at stock. And then once you start overclocking, it can shoot up to 200 watts. Um, so it requires a lot of power. And I'm very glad that Silverstone was able to provide a modern PSU that wasn't just efficient and small, but also had the power capacity to run these high-powered CPUs. Now, last but not least, over here, 
We have Thermaltake's A500 chassis. This was released in the fall of 2018 and shown off in retail form at CS 2019. I asked Thermaltake if they'd be willing to send it along and they were more than happy to provide it. Um, a couple of really cool features of this case are, first of all, that it has dual glass panels that are mounted on hinges, so they're really, really easy to open, access your PC, work on it, show it off, close it up, and it's it's actually safer and more durable than, for instance, the, the, the screws that are often used to affix tempered glass on other cases on the market. So I really appreciate that Thermaltake was able to add that to this case. These are secured with a magnet plus a latch if you need to transport it. Uh, the glass is custom cut to allow for venting along the top and the front. And of course the front of the case, the front fascia, is a solid aluminum piece, uh, sandblasted aluminum, as is the top of the chassis. Now this is becoming a real trend. Most high-end enthusiasts are looking for this monolithic uh, appearance. And most manufacturers are shifting over from the mesh front panels that we've seen in the past to at least having some of their high-end line using kind of these solid front fascias. And uh, this is one of the best looking such models on the market. A lot of companies are going with glass panels, which is cool. You can show off some RG effects through that. But you know, for, to, to, for a case to look just as good off when, as when it's on, you can't beat the sandblasted aluminum look from Thermaltech. One last thing I'll mention about that chassis is that it has a cutout right here uh, to show off your power supplies branding or wattage or whatever it may be. A lot of PSUs released over the past few years and uh, I don't have a sticker that will be oriented in the right direction to show off. They'll actually be upside down. Um, that included an EVGA 1000 watt model that I have um, and that I've used in previous builds and you mount it in the system it'll just look goofy because the sticker will be upside down. Luckily Silverstone is uh, up with the trends. They realize that cases are showing off the power supplies mounting them on the bottom with the fan pointed towards the floor and therefore the sticker is oriented in the right uh, direction with the Silverstone PSU and will look great in this system. So that's it for now. Like I said, you should be uh, seeing a video coming out in the next couple of weeks where I'm going to be assembling all this gear into that case and putting it through its paces. Um, if you like this video, if you're excited to see what comes next, please like and subscribe. Please put your comments down below telling me what you most want to learn about in the upcoming video. Uh, which of this gear is most interesting to you, um, if there, you have any questions about this new gear, or some of its, if you want me to highlight some of its extra features that I haven't mentioned so far. Um, so that's it for now. Again, I'm Ari from the Tech Buyers Guru, and I'll catch you next time.